It's me, it's your pocket tutor. And in today's lesson, we'll talk about vectors, their operations, their decomposition, and eventually we'll do some exercises with them, just to learn how to use them and what they actually are. So, first of all, how is vector defined? Well, a vector is a mathematical object, is an entity that has a direction, an orientation, and a magnitude. In physics, vectors are used to represent physical quantities having a direction, an orientation, and a magnitude. As we can see in this first picture, this is a vector. The direction is given by the line that defines his direction in space, while the orientation is given by an arrowhead. This gives you a single orientation. Well, a vector in space can have infinite directions, but only two orientations once the direction is defined. A vector can have infinite directions, but once the direction is fixed, it can only have two different orientations. As we can still see here, we have one orientation that is going from A to B, while we can have a different orientation that is going from B to A, so in this way. Now, the vector will have the same direction, but opposite orientation, and also the same magnitude, where the magnitude is given by the actual length of the vector itself. In physics, we have many different examples of vectors. So every physical quantity having a direction, an orientation, and a magnitude, meaning an intensity, is described by a vector. For example, we can have acceleration, speed, force, or displacement. For example, talking about displacement, here in this picture we see an ant. This ant is moving from point A to point B. It doesn't actually matter the route that it takes. What it matters is the starting point and the end point. In this case, the direction is given by the line passing through A and B. We have the direction, but we've seen that we can have two different orientations. The orientation is given by the line going from A to B. We cannot go from B to A, it wouldn't be the same vector, because the displacement vector describes the movement from the starting point to the end point, so we only have one single direction. And the magnitude of this vector is given by the length, by the distance between point A and point B. It's very important to understand the difference between vectors and scalars. Vectors, are, as we've seen, describe physical quantities having direction, orientation, and magnitude. These three characteristics are fundamental in order to have a vector. While when we're talking about scalars, scalars are just real numbers, and they could still be describing physical quantities, like in this case, in cases of length, mass, time, and temperature, but they don't have a direction and an orientation. While, as we've seen, in cases of displacement, forces, speed, and acceleration, we have a direction. Like numbers, vectors are mathematical objects, and we can do operations with them. The most important ones are sum and different. Now, for summing and subtracting vectors, we have two different methods. The first one is the head-to-tail method, and the second one is the parallelogram method. For what concerns the first one, it's kind of easy. Let's consider of having two different vectors, vector A and vector B. Now, in order to compute the sum A plus B, we need to draw again the vector A. And then we connect the tail of vector B to the head of vector A. So the tail is this one and the head is this one. So we'll just draw the vector B in this way. The sum between these two vectors is a third vector going from the tail of A to the head of B. And we can actually draw it in a different color. And this vector here will be A plus B. And this is the head to tail method. And in order to use it, for computing the difference between two vectors, we can see 
the sum of a plus b as the sum between a vector a plus the vector minus b. This is absolutely equivalent of saying a minus b. Minus b is a vector like b with the same direction, same magnitude, but opposite orientation. So if this one is plus b or just b, this vector will be minus b. Hence, a minus b, we can do it in the same way. We draw a, we connect the head of a to the tail of b, in this case of minus b, that's this one. And in this case, the sum a plus minus b or a minus b will be this new vector here. And these are sum and difference with the head-to-tail method. While for the second method, that is the parallelogram method, to sum two different vectors, we build a parallelogram. And the sum of the two vectors will be the diagonal of the parallelogram. So let's see. Let's still consider the same two vectors, a and b. Now, in order to sum them, we build a parallelogram. So one side will be given by A and the other one will be given by B. So we'll just build the parallelogram with one side parallel to B and one parallel to A and their sum will be given by this vector here. And this will be A plus b. And in order to compute the difference, the thing is the same. Instead of summing plus b, we'll just sum minus b. So in this case, this is minus b. And in order to build a parallelogram, we'll just draw a, we'll draw minus b, And then we'll just build a parallelogram like this way. And the solution of A minus B will be this one. And as we can see, the two methods are absolutely equivalent. So you can use either one of the two. They're absolutely the same, which one you prefer. But these are the only two methods to sum and subtract different vectors. Another very important operation that we can do with vectors is its decomposition. The vector decomposition can actually be seen as the inverse operation of the sum. What does it mean? Decomposing a vector means finding its component whose sum will give that vector. So let me just explain this better. Let's consider this vector v. We want to find two vectors decomposing v along the line r and s in such a way that their sum will give the same vector. And how can we do that? Well, in order to do so, we need to draw two lines parallel to r and s, passing through the head of the vector v, in this way. So this first line is parallel to r, while this second one is parallel to s and they both pass to the head of v. Now, the decomposition of v gives two different vectors. There are this one, that is v along r, and this one, that is v along s. Now, we can see that their sum will give v, and we can actually see it because this here is the Parallelogram is the same one that we drew previously. So we can actually see it. This is the inverse operation of the parallelogram method for the sum. And we can write V is equal to VR plus VS. And this is the vector decomposition. The decomposition of a vector is always along some lines. Another operation that can be done on vectors is the multiplication. 
So we can multiply vectors with numbers. Let's consider this first example. Let's assume I'm having a vector v, it's given by this one. And let's assume that we want to compute 3 times v. Now, the number 3 is a scalar, and it doesn't change direction, doesn't change orientation, it only changes the magnitude of the vector. So the resulting vector would just be a vector with the same orientation, same direction of v, but with 3 times its magnitude. So the vector 3 times v will be this one, whose direction is the same of v, the orientation is the same as well, but the length will be exactly 3 times the length of v. And this is the vector 3v. We can also multiply the vector by negative numbers. So let's try to compute minus 2 times v. The sine minus can actually be seen as multiplying only v. So we can see this one as 2 times minus v. And as we've seen for a difference between vectors, minus v is just a vector with the same magnitude of v, same direction of v, but opposite orientation. So minus 2v will be a vector with the same direction, 2 times the magnitude of v, but opposite orientation. And this will be minus 2v. So you can actually see that it's kind of simple to multiply by numbers. What's a little bit more complex is the multiplication between vectors. We have two different operations. One is called the scalar product and the other one is called the cross product. The scalar product, well, first let's assume of having two different vectors, vector v and vector w. Now, how can we write the scalar product? For a scalar product, the agreement wants that we use the dot sign. So the scalar product will be written as v dot w. And this is the scalar product between two vectors. What this operation will yield is a scalar number. So the scalar product will give a number, not a vector, just a number. While for the cross product, we use the symbol x across, and we can write it in this way, v cross product w. But in this case, what we will get is a vector. So for the scalar product, we'll get a scalar. That is just a real number, while with the cross product, we'll get a vector. We're not going to see now how to compute these operations, but we will cover these two operations in future lessons. Now that we've seen what is a vector, what does it do, and how to do operations with them, let's try to solve a couple of exercises. So let's see. First one. First one says, a plane flies 300 miles towards north and 400 miles towards west. Draw the resulting displacement vector and graphically determine its length. Let's try it. It says, let's assume that the starting point is this one, point A. This plane flies 300 miles north. 300 is the magnitude of the vector. And then it flies 400 miles towards west. This one. Same thing, 400 is the magnitude. Now, how to solve this one graphically? Well, this is already the head to tail method. You see, the tail of the second vector already lies on top of the head of the first one. So, the result will be this vector going from the tail of the first one to the head of the second one. And this will be the displacement vector. Okay? Now, let's try to solve the same exercise, but with the second method, the parallelogram one. With the parallelogram method, we'll do the same thing. We'll start from A, we'll draw the first displacement vector that has a magnitude of 300 miles, the second displacement vector towards west of 400 miles as magnitude. And now in order to solve the parallelogram method, 
we need to move the second vector on the tail of the first one, forming a parallelogram. So let's select this one. Let's move it here. And let's build the parallelogram. In this case, it's very easy since we don't get a parallelogram, but we just get a rectangle. And the solution, the overall displacement vector, will be given by the diagonal of this rectangle. And it's this one. And this is the overall displacement vector. Let's see another one. This exercise says, the vector V has a magnitude equal to 16. The line R creates with V an angle of 30 degrees, and the line S is perpendicular to R. Find the values of the two component vectors of V along the directions of R and S. Okay, let's see. So we have a vector V, we just know the magnitude. We can draw this one. And this is V, whose magnitude is 16. The line R creates with V an angle of 30 degrees. Let's assume that this is the line R, and this is 30 degrees. And then we have a line S perpendicular to R. And we can draw it in this way. And this is S. So if this angle is 90 degrees, this angle here between the vector V and S will be 60 degrees. How to find the components along those lines? Well, we need to decompose the vector. So first of all, let's decompose V along S. So we just project the vector along S. The projection must be parallel to the line R. And this vector here, lying on S, will be V, S, the component of V along S. While for R, we just project the vector V along R. This projection, be careful, must be parallel to S. And this one here will be V, R, the component of V lying on R. How can we actually find the values? Well, this is difficult. Now, to find the exact solution of this problem, we would need mathematical tools that we don't have yet. But if you want to solve it, you can just draw the vector V on a simple piece of paper, measure it with the ruler, and then measure its own component. In this case, what you will find is that Vs, his magnitude, is equal to 8, while the magnitude of VR is almost 14. Okay? And this is it. So, what we've seen in this second lesson is just a basic introduction of vectors. We haven't seen anything too difficult, it's just in order for us to be able to use them when we will be talking with forces next lesson. But we have seen the difference between vectors and scalars. We've seen that a vector must have a magnitude, a direction, and an orientation. We've seen some simple operations with them. We've seen some, we've seen the difference, we've seen the two different methods. We've seen the multiplications between vectors and real numbers. We've seen multiplications between vectors, so the cross product and scalar product. And then we've just seen two simple exercises just to see how to use them. And that's it. Please let me know would you have any questions, if you need to see anything more in depth, if you want me to explain something more, something better, for example, the products between vectors, if you already know what is a vector, how to actually do the operations, please let me know. And see you next lesson. Bye-bye.